reality that that we need to connect uh, you know this this topic with with um, a, a sort of a deeper sort of knowing that that is actually how we want to be. This is actually how we actually want to show up, even though we may not realize it in what we call the moment of choice. So we know that there's a very significant gap between what we know and what we do with this area. So how do you bridge that gap? And the way we tend to do it, you know, and how we train our coaches to do it is firstly to create a, a positive, what we call a positive emotional attractor, to have the client install um, the sense of how they're going to feel um, uh, at, a, at a deeper level when they behave in line with these, uh, these goals around Indiana. And generally speaking, we, you know, uh, you know, bias is kind of, um, you know, we, we, it's an imperative that was installed into our neural operating system like 70,000 years ago. And we're we very, very good at creating sort of in-group, out-group thinking. Um, but it doesn't serve us today. It may have served us 70,000 years ago when if we saw somebody that didn't look like us or didn't behave like us, it may have genuinely been a threat at that time. You know, and, and, and that's what, to some extent, we need to overcome. Of course, it doesn't serve us today. We don't have those kinds of threats. And so we need to let people understand how they can just let go of this kind of worry and, and install on top of it um, a powerful knowing that behaving inclusively will actually make you not, not only is it a benefit to your organization, it will make you feel good. <laughs> And, and that's kind of the first thing that we need to do as coaches is to help the client to um, look at the opportunity that may arise for them when they behave inclusively, both personally and also professionally. That ultimately at Jardines, um, to quote this as an example, we, we believe in the building of an inclusive workplace where everyone can succeed. And in order to actually bring that into life, we believe that, um, if our leaders could practice inclusive leadership, then it will help us create that magic. And leaders as coaches will show up with all the, 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 the quality and the traits that we believe is part of inclusive leadership. Our job is to create allergic reactions every day. Um, you kind of have to push the envelope um, to see how far the organization could sustain this level of push, right? And of course, you know, inevitably, we will get set back, we'll get resistant. And I feel that the coach training has helped me to create a lot more healthy space to digest all that, because otherwise I would end up showing in unproductively and that definitely won't be able to help um, moving this agenda forward so I feel coaching is totally relevant personally and for the organization and that whole perspective on you know helping the organization to find the behavioral changes they want but then we as coaches being able to help people figure out what do they need to change in order to show up in the way my organization would love me to show up as well as how would I love to show up he thinks it's about self-awareness so that the coach re really remains grounded <clears throat> and in this conversation it's about humility to understand that oh, what's happening there is not about me but about the person i'm talking to and the needs this person has and it's about courage to reflect and feed back uh, what I perceive as a coach without all the bias as well that I would be afraid of uh, by saying that. It's about self-awareness, humility, and courage.